Hi everyone and welcome to learn A-level biology for free with Miss Estruk. In this video I'm going to be going through biodiversity and calculating the index of diversity for A-level biology. If you do find this video helpful today please give it a thumbs up and make sure you click the subscribe button to keep up to date with all the latest videos during self-isolation. So just have a look at some of the key terms first of all, so what we mean by biodiversity. There's three different measures for biodiversity. Species diversity, which is the number of different species and individuals within each species in a community. Genetic diversity, which is the variety of genes amongst all the individuals in a population of just one species or ecosystem diversity and this is the range of different habitats and this could be a measurement on a small scale or it could be considering the entire earth. Now AQA A-level biology only focuses on species diversity and in particular species richness and that is the number of different species in a particular area at a particular time. So why is it important then to know about biodiversity? So we can use this biodiversity to describe a range of habitats. And as I was saying, that could be local small habitats or an in, on the entire earth. And if a habitat does have a low biodiversity, that's not necessarily a cause for concern because some habitats, if you think about in the Arctic or in the desert, in those ecosystems, you wouldn't be surprised that there was a low biodiversity because the abiotic factors are so harsh, meaning that it might be incredibly cold, incredibly dry, so it's hard for organisms to survive there. What is a cause for concern though is, if a biodiversity that was once high starts to decrease. So that's why biodiversity is an important measure, it's so we can measure changes, and sadly it's often caused by human activity. Now the human activity that we focus on in AQA biology is farming practices and some common farming practices which do reduce the biodiversity are these five here. So destruction of hedgerows, what that means is the parameter of a field sometimes has hedges instead of fences and those hedges provide a habitat for lots of insects, small birds, small mammals, but they're in the way of farmers being able to go up and down their fields really easily in a tractor. So those are often taken out. Selective breeding. Now this is when um, plants, or it could be animals, which are displaying desirable characteristics, are constantly selected to reproduce, to make sure you always see these desirable characteristics in the future generations. But in doing that, you're narrowing down the gene pool and you don't have as much diversity. Monocultures is what we can actually see in this photo here, and that is when you're only growing one plant species in an entire field. And if you've only got one plant species, straight away that is a low diversity, but also it's only going to attract the same um, insects that can feed on that, and therefore you're going to have a much lower diversity. Overgrazing, so if animals are left to overgraze and then you're reducing the plants too much, that's a knock-on effect on the feed web. And sometimes it might be that ponds are filled in or wetlands are drained to provide space for farming. So what needs to be focused on is compromises, because farming does have to exist to provide food for humans, especially as the population is increasing. So we have to have a compromise to make sure we are conserving the biodiversity to an extent and enabling farming. So you could get questions linked to that. So often it might be that instead of destroying the hedgerows, there might be an agreement that you can remove two, but not all of them. Selective breeding, it might be that you can only do that in a particular area or for a particular species. Monocultures, sometimes they'll have crop rotations, meaning that you have to rotate each year which crop you have, or even have sections or rows within the field of different species. So there's a range of different compromises. So the last thing you need to know in this topic is how can you measure the biodiversity then to monitor whether it is decreasing? And this is done using the index of diversity. Now this is different from species richness, which we said at the start was just the number of species. 
because index of diversity also takes into account the number of individuals within each species. And that is an incredibly common question to be asked, what is the difference between species richness and index of diversity? And that's it there, that sentence. So if we use Simpson's index of diversity to calculate this. Here's the formula, and you do not have to remember that formula for the A-level exam. However, what AQA won't give you is what all of the components of the formula stand for. So that's what you need to remember, not the formula itself. So capital N is the total number of organisms of all the species present. Lowercase n is the population size of one species. So total number of organisms of one species. You won't get a value lower than one. So one is the lowest value you can get. And the larger the value, the greater the species diversity. And typically it falls between one and 10. Most of the time it's actually between three and six. So if we have a go at an example here, the species I've just called A, B, C and D. And we're told here the number of individuals that there are in species A, B, C and D. And then I've got the bottom part of the formula. So then if we calculate capital N, that is the total number of all of the living things. Here we have the denominator here. So the N brackets N minus one, but it's the lowercase N. So that would be six times five, which is 30. Then this symbol here is the sum of. So if we add up all of those, it comes to 180. So now we can input that into the formula. So the top row would be 25 times 24, because it's 25 minus one. The bottom row we've already worked out is 180. So 25 times 24 divided by 180, and it comes to 3.3. So that again has come up, I think pretty much every year on the new spec being asked to calculate this, either on the AS paper or on paper one or paper two, sorry, paper three of the A-level papers. So it's definitely worth practicing that. And I've got some questions on MissEstrick.com, so you can head over there if you do want to have a go at some of those questions. So if you have found it helpful today, please give it a thumbs up. If you want any more resources, head over to the Twitter, the WordPress or Instagram and then subscribe to keep up to date on all of the latest videos.